Welcome, everybody. I'm John Zadar, your host, and this is On Top and Hot. Today, we have a special episode. We are taking a look at and being joined by Totos Medical. They are on the OTC QB under the ticker TOMDF. Now, Totos is a revenue generating biotech. They engineer life saving diagnostic solutions and early detection tests. Now, these tests can detect a variety of cancers, neurodegenerative disorders like Alzheimer's disease, as well as viruses. And that does include COVID-19. Now, our guest today has recently appeared on numerous media outlets such as Fox Business, Yahoo Finance, BNC, and Newsy, spreading the word about their headway and accomplishments. And to share that information with us today is the CEO of Todos, Mr. Gerald E. Commission. Hello, Gerald. How are you today? I'm doing well, thank you. How are you? Oh, I'm excellent. We are so happy to have you here. We've been looking forward to this interview, to tell you the truth. Thank you. Now, I know there is a lot going on with your company right now, but before we jump into the current updates and the catalyst, can you, for our new viewers, give us a little bit of information of your experience and a little bit about the company? Uh, sure. Uh, well, so my background, I uh, graduated from Stanford University 2006 engineering with a focus on financial decisions. I got into biotech uh, with my father, uh, John Kamisiang, PhD, uh, who was at um, McGill University and then subsequently ran two divisions at NINDS and NIH in the neurology group. Mm -hmm. um, he spun out a company uh, called uh, Precient Neuropharma uh, and uh, made some discoveries, uh, particularly around MAMF, uh, and then help, asked me to help him. Uh, and so I got involved in helping him in around 2008 uh, and we built up uh, a number of uh, verticals within that company around neurology uh, and testing. Uh, and yeah. then uh, in 2018, we met up with Totos Medical, and they uh, were quite interested in our testing division. So we ended up doing an acquisition. Uh, Totos ended up acquiring uh, a division of, our, of my previous company that was called Breakthrough Diagnostics. Uh, so that's the entity that Totos acquired. And six months after the acquisition, they asked me to come in and step in as CEO. I see. And how long have you been with the company Totos? So I've been with the company for two years. Uh, I've seen a lot of transformation. When I get, got involved, it was really uh, a company that was developing a novel, uh, you know, new way of looking at blood with uh, AI and uh, spectroscopy. Mm -hmm. Um, and trying to bring a pan-cancer test to market. Uh, and since then, we've kind of transformed it into a commercial business. We, you know, we've done, did five plus million in revenue in the first year I took over. Uh, we significantly, significantly increased that last year. We had 7.7 .7 million through the end of uh, Q3. Uh, and then we had a very good Q4. Our numbers aren't out yet, but you will see that uh, when they do come out. Um, and we did that primarily around COVID testing. So we we bought a company wow. in Atlanta, Georgia, um, that had a new uh, cancer test that was very interesting for breast cancer, and also had a PCR lab uh, to be able to do some genetic uh, testing. Uh, when COVID hit, we turned that PCR lab into a staging ground uh, to allow us to really understand how to scale uh, PCR testing. And then we built a business um, servicing other labs with a uh, reagent rental model where we would buy the equipment, we would install it in their labs, and then they would be allowed to use it provided that they bought all of our reagents. That's where the majority of our revenue came from. Uh, and then in the summer of 21, um, uh, we completed that acquisition of ProVista, so we became owners of the lab. So we started the acquisition in early 2020, we finished it in mid-21, and when we finished it, we really decided after that year and a half that instead of trying to service the lab, we want to be the lab. And right. so we expanded uh, substantially, put a lot of equipment in and started to scale up uh, COVID testing on our own. Uh, and that's really where we see the next major uh, driver of growth uh, for revenue uh, for us being able to service other labs that have significant volume that can't handle the capacity. So, so we have that. Um, we have layering on top of that a suite of uh, proprietary uh, diagnostic products, starting with Videsa, which is a blood test for breast cancer that was right. on the market. Over $50 million went into it. Um, over a thousand patients of prospective data has been gathered and published now in three 
peer-reviewed publications in high-impact journals with uh, mm -hmm. the top uh, collaborators at Stanford, Harvard, Johns Hopkins, and um, you know, Clinic, Clinic, Mayo Clinic, uh, really the MD Anderson, all the top cancer places in the country. Mm -hmm. Um, and we are, you know, positioning now to relaunch that test uh, probably within the next 12 months. Uh, so that's the longer term vision, you know, as we build out the lab at Provista, you know, real, a good set of revenue from COVID testing that's expanding. We have the long term Videsa new breast cancer test that could change the paradigm for breast cancer testing. And then in between, we're building up uh, the suite of other tests uh, that people who buy or who are involved in breast cancer need so that we can service the whole, you know, the whole patient, the whole community and really capture all the revenue. So that's ProVista. And then uh, the other thing that we did uh, since I got involved is we formed a joint venture and now have completed uh, as of today, this morning, completed the acquisition of, um, th of uh, NLC Pharma's assets and NLC Pharma um, has been uh, working, uh, their scientists have been working for over 25 years on the development of solutions for coronaviruses. Um, so starting with, SAR, with uh, Common Cold 229E, moving to SARS-1 in the first outbreak, and then to MERS in the second outbreak, and now with SARS-CoV-2, obviously a global outbreak, uh, this became of keen interest and the background and experience uh, that Dr. Arad has is, is parallel uh, second to none. And so we we got involved with her. We helped fund uh, the initial work around the testing for 3CL protease biology that we call TOLA test. Uh, that's another way of looking at uh, COVID-19. Instead of looking at the antigens, which is what antigen tests do, or right. the virus, which is what PCR tests do, we look at the proteases that the viruses produce as a much better proxy of a function so we right. look at whether or not a virus is functional, and that's really the key. So, you know, when you look at if it's functional, then you can also look at how functional it is. And that's where you get clues about infectivity. Uh, not only you get clues about, one, you have it, and then two, how infectious are you? Uh, mm -hmm. And those are really the two, two of the key things. Um, and once we, you know, really saw that that technology was working uh, in a way that gave a lot more information than just whether you have the virus or not, or whether you have the antigen or not. We bought into that and we understand that this protein was is so critical for SARS-CoV-2 virus, they actually changed the name from 3CL protease to call it the main protease. So in the scientific literature now, the 3CL protease is actually called the main protease or mm -hmm. MPRO. Uh, so that's how, that's how fundamental it is. Science actually changed the name to call this the so meat. you guys really hit the nail on the head. Hit the, head of the nail. hit the nail on the head, exactly. Uh, we got involved um, after we saw success with the testing. We got involved with inhibitors uh, because she'd also been working not only on the test, but on the solutions. Ways yes. to stop this protease and stop the virus from being able to function. And that's what we ended up bringing to market. So we have uh, a dietary supplement on the market that we call Tolovid. Um, the FDA has given it a certificate of free sale. And uh, last year, as we got more research and we submitted more data, they actually gave us the claim to be able to call it uh, 3CL protease inhibitor on the bottle and in our marketing materials. So we're the only uh, product in the entire marketplace that has that uh, claim from the FDA other than uh, the newly approved drug from Pfizer for COVID-19. It's called Paxlovid. So these two products are the only products in the market that um, inhibit the three cell protease with allowed claims. Actually, uh, we yeah. can't say that we treat COVID with that product because we haven't run the studies to confirm the dosing required. But people are using it today for a variety of reasons, and we think that they're having some success. And yeah, I was actually reading up on that. You know, news is all over the world. Your, your products are over in the EU, which I want to touch on to. And I was reading testimonials over there, which are a little tougher to get over here because of the FDA and all the rules. But I was very impressed to hear uh, how Tolavid is working over there. As a matter of fact, speaking of Tolavid, you made a deal with a company, T-Cell Protect, over in Greece. Now, this sounds like a really big deal to me, the distribution that they can actually cover in, in the EU, is that as big as it sounds? Uh, it is. It is. And in, in fact, you know, the question now as things are, are moving is, 
is it too big for T cell or not? Uh, because you know they 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 have such concentration and such market share in Greece. They could carpet bomb Greece and control Greece and make so much money with Greece that you know they, they don't necessarily need to cover all the other jurisdictions. But, but they have they had eleven thousand locations just in Greece. Exactly. Exactly. So um, so it, it's a big deal. Um, obviously, it's starting to gain some traction. And we're uh, in the process of putting things forward. So from our perspective, uh, we see that as very important. And mostly, not just because of the sales that will be coming out of that uh, arrangement, which, again, you know, Greece versus the rest of Europe, you know, that'll play itself out. But more importantly, in Greece, we also gave them the rights for our drug candidate, Tolovir, um, mm -hmm. that we have clinical data on uh, out of Israel. And uh, there's a lot of interest within the government to see this product get into the market quickly. So we're engaged now in putting together, you know, submissions to be able to get emergency use for hospitalized COVID-19 patients with Tolovir. Um, so, you know, things have kind of expanded a lot from this 3CL thing sounds cool. It's interesting that Pfizer is getting involved, you know, two years into the pandemic. Now yeah. it's becoming very clear that it's central and people need solutions. And we think that we can, you know, give people solutions to help them in the time of need, which is now. Now you mentioned Tolivir. I know you've uh, just had your phase two trial that had some tremendous reportings come out of it. Can you share those with us? Sure. So, so, so just so everyone's aware, uh, uh, both Tolivid, our dietary supplement that we uh, cannot make any claims for, it's not approved to diagnose, treat, prevent, or cure mm -hmm. any disease, including COVID. Whereas we have Tolivir, which is a different formulation of some of the same raw materials. And that one we are going after right now, regulatory approval with that one for hospitalized patients. Uh, so in the hospital, there, there are really two things. Obviously, you want to avoid death. Uh, and we dramatically, dramatically you know, eliminated death when you're on the drug. So no patients uh, on the drug um, died in our study. Um, and this confirms some previous data that we had actually on the supplement version from hospital data that we that uh, 3CL uh, founder Dr. Arad did in 2020. So it was very encouraging to see that this data was you know further confirmed. Um, yeah, it so was exciting to read zero percent deaths using Tolivir, and it was sad to see 22 percent deaths on the placebo. Wow, I mean that shows you the impact that the drug has. I mean, right then and there, it took care of it. How long do we expect that to continue through the phase trials? So right now we're uh, in the extension phase, gathering additional data to qualify the effect size so we can get ready for the phase two, three. There are some governments that are ready to approve it potentially now based mm -hmm. upon the data and the need that they have. And there are others um, that you know will require some more time or maybe give it a provisional emergency use uh, with a, an agreement to follow up. Is the so FDA looking to do anything like that, a fast track or anything? I mean, we are, what's happening right now? We are in the process now of, of uh, preparing to engage with FDA around this. There's a, a whole strategy because this is a, a botanical product. It's not a standard right. uh, chemical drug because it's all natural. Mm -hmm. um, and as a result of it being natural, this is kind of a different pathway that most things at the FDA are not natural products. <laughs> True. So we, We've brought in, you know, uh, a series of people who specialize in getting these natural products through into the market. And, and in fact, you know, uh, we think that we can make a lot of progress with both Tolovir and, uh, interestingly enough, after a lot of conversations with Tolovit. Um, so we think we could potentially move that forward as well in the U.S. And, and we're looking at OTC drug as a pathway. Um, so getting back to Tolovir, it wasn't just taking death off the table. We also dramatically reduced the amount of time people spend in the hospital. On average, people were spending 17 days in the hospital on the placebo group and only 10 days in the hospital on the, to on the Tolovir group. So reduction of time in the hospital actually for governments is even more important because they need the turnover for those bed for the bed capacity. Right. The other thing that was very critical is we reduced uh, significantly the percentage of patients that go onto ventilator. Okay. And that's also, so you're freeing up ICU space. You're getting patients that freeing up ICU space, getting patients out of the hospital. And then patients that did require supplemental oxygen there, they required uh, 3.8 days on Tolivir versus 5.8 days uh, on the placebo. So significant reduction in the need for oxygen, 
uh, the number of people who need oxygen as well as the people that do need oxygen reduction of the amount of oxygen that they need and for the you know period of time. So all, across all the metrics, including the biomarkers, CRP, IL-6, D-dimer, we saw improvement versus the standard of care across the board. And it's important to know the standard of care includes remdesivir and dexamethasone. So, you know, we weren't comparing against obviously naive patients because that's unethical. We were comparing against the best that is out there today. And we significantly improved upon it. That is excellent news to hear. Now, your testing is your lion's share of your revenues right now. And you've got a new TOLA test uh, sector or division that you're going to be working with. Can you tell us more about TOLA test? Sure. So, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, TOLA test looks at the 3CL protease, not at the antigen or the virus. So what that does is it allows you to really understand whether someone is infectious. And so the, the whole debate now that's going on is how many days you have to stay in quarantine? Well, the answer is it depends on who you are and it depends on what you do. Uh, no two people are the same sure. um, because people clear the viruses as we found and as it's published in the literature at different rates. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the idea that you can put a one size fits all on this especially with new variants that have different biologies is, is very challenging. So looking at the protease, uh, we think we can add significant value. We can find patients earlier with rapid test format of the TOLA test. So we all know, we've all heard the problems of the rapid antigen tests where people test negative for several days and then test positive. Right. So they go to PCR test anyways. Uh, we get rid of that because we can pick it up at the same time that you PCR. And we did a we had a study in a community setting where we had 100 percent correlation with identification of PCR at the earliest stages of the disease. And then on the back end, we had a study in the hospital um, in, a, in a lab format where the question was, are people should these people be being released from the hospital? Are they still infectious? And in fact, what we found is many people are released from the hospital while they're still extremely infectious. Uh, and they don't tell them when they go home to isolate. So mm -hmm. you could be in a situation where, you know, grandma gets sick, she goes to the hospital. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's great. She starts to feel better. She gets home and then she infects everybody else with everybody thinking they let her out of the hospital. She must be fine now. Right. right? And so, and that's the big risk. And for people going back to work, um, you know, all these different things, because, you know, this virus is now everywhere. Um, be able to know that someone doesn't have it anymore after they had it is very important. So that's really where Tolo Test is going. But our revenue is bread and butter, majority PCR. So we we have a PCR testing lab where we've built up automation where we can do over 25,000 PCR tests per day. Um, and so we've been positioning ourselves to be a, a major player uh, in the reference lab business and be able to service not only other labs, but as we prepare for the launch of our cancer test down the road, uh, we're getting direct billings with oncologists, doctors who are ultimately going to use Videsa later who need PCR testing now. And that's where we're helping. So what do you see for the company if we are blessed to have the COVID go away and we don't need these tests anymore and Tolavid and Tolavir just aren't as popular as they are right now? Where do you see the company going then? Um, well, yeah, look, that, our, that brings us back to the bread and butter of the company before COVID came around, obviously, which is our cancer testing. So okay. what we're doing right now is we're building up our uh, infrastructure, our customers, our customer service uh, to add beyond just the PCR testing, to add, uh, you know, UTI, uh, cancer testing, uh, uh, pharmacodynamic testing, pharmacogenomic testing. Uh, other types of testing that uh, oncologists, um, primary care physicians, uh, urgent care centers, corporate wellness programs, the kind of testing that they need. Because right. what, what happens is those guys, they get surge of COVID, of course. And when they get a surge of COVID, it, it, they'd like to be able to send all of their tests, including their other tests, to the same lab. So sure. the fact that we have COVID and we build up our other menu um, will allow us to build our customer base in preparation for Vedessa, uh, and which is the blood test for breast cancer that, uh, you know, we acquired as part of the ProVista acquisition. So our strategy, you know, if COVID disappears tomorrow, we stay laser focused on delivering 
uh, for the clients that we're building out. And, right. gen- and continuing to build our revenue and then preparing for the launch of Edessa, which could be a game changer with the breast cancer market. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. One, one in three people have cancer. So that's a huge market right there. Yes. Now, where do you see the revenues going with this company over the next year, next two years? So we, we definitely did. Uh, you know, we haven't published yet our audited financials, so I can't get into too much detail, but what I can say, okay. we did 5 million in 2020. We did more than double that in 2021, and we wow. expect to continue to more than double that for 2022. Um, and we see it for 2023, once Videsa gets on the market, a significant ramp in that revenue, because now we'll have our own proprietary test. And then if anybody wants Videsa, that means they have to send us their other tests as well that we have put into the market. So. You know, we're taking a holistic approach to how we can help right. physicians and patients manage, you know, their diseases or manage their uh, wellness, because uh, ho- hopefully you're managing health instead of managing disease. Uh, and that's really the transition we want to help patients with. And obviously things like Tolavid in certain circumstances or other supplements in other circumstances can also help support that. So right now, you know, the only thing that we have um, on the supplement side is Tolavid and we're going to stay focused there. But as we build out our test menu and we see other things um, that we can evaluate for, if we're able to find similar type solutions um, that can help for those other things based upon diagnostic tests, that is something that we're looking at as the next kind of phase of the company. Maybe not okay. this year or next year, but into the future. I like the fact that you're botanical. I mean, I think most of us hate drugs because they're not botanical. It's just a lot of chemicals <laughs> and it doesn't feel good. Botanical just sounds right. Now, I heard you're thinking about uplisting. How soon do you plan on doing that? And are you going to have to change the share structures to do it? Um, we will definitely have to change the share structure to do it. Unless, of course, we have a, a phenomenal run in the stock. Right. Let's um, hope for that. <laughs> let's hope for that. Um, we are going to listen to the marketplace with regards to when we would try to uplist. So we, we do have, uh, you know, underwriters engaged. Um, we, we are in conversations with NASDAQ. We've been working through all the financial issues to make sure that the balance sheet is where it needs to be to uplist. And now it's just a question of timing. So we want to hit our milestones because we don't want to be changing the st- share structure right now. We want to do it into strength. And so that's our, that's our plan and our strategy. What do you see as the upcoming catalyst for the company now? Well, we've got several catalysts. We're launching a very significant um, marketing campaign for the dietary supplement product uh, Mm -hmm. for Tolavid. Now that we've got a lot of testimonials and we've got a lot of marketing collateral from some stuff we did at the Super Bowl and some celebrities that are uh, becoming advocates because it helped them. Now, we're starting to, uh, we're going to be picking up significantly on the marketing side for Total Vid. That's going to be a significant. Is that just revenue. stateside or is that going to be around the world? Right now it's stateside, but we're preparing to go global. So, uh, and the question is, do we do some of that through partnership versus direct buying from the states, uh, you know, price points and different markets? But, you know, it's very clear uh, that the benefit, the potential benefit, of these products um, dramatically reduces costs, right? And and mm-hmm. so that you know that kind of interplays exactly where most government want, governments want to go. So uh, that's you know number one. Number two, obviously, we're uh, looking to get approval for Tolavir in several right. countries, um, and we just hired a, a director of government affairs, vice president of government affairs, who is already engaged with several governments. Um, in discussions about getting Tolavir approval. So, and, you know, one or more catalysts can come out of that. Then, of course, we have several uh, significant revenue opportunities that we're seeing in our growing PCR testing business. Because even though, you know, testing goes up and testing goes down, the reality is it's consolidated higher every time there's been a spike. Oh, and, and, and that's because more and more people say, okay, let's just implement some kind of testing program just in case so that when things start to go, we have it. Because if you don't have it before, as we all know, when the spikes hit, you're not getting testing. Um, so a lot, a lot of people are saying, I'm going to prepare for that now. Sure, um, absolutely. Right? 
So that's that's the next thing is when the spikes hit, we're ready to track that demand. And then we capture clients during that time frame that allow us and they move over to us and then we start to service them over the long term. So we're building up that client base as we get ready for Videssa. Um, so that, you know, that revenue base. And then, you know, we've got two other clinical trials that are on. We have one that's ongoing right now. Actually, two that are ongoing now. Yeah. One, we have a clinical trial for our blood test for Alzheimer's disease. Right. Uh, this has been ongoing since 2016. We had an interim readout in 2019, and we have the final readout that should be coming uh, sometime in the first half of 2022. Mm -hmm. uh, that's for our Limpro blood test. And then uh, we have the studies that we're doing to get Videsa back into the market in preparation for the launch in 2023. So it's a it's a kind of a packed house and a packed schedule, and that doesn't even include the other business, which is the distribution to the labs. That is somewhat becoming less of a focus uh, from our team, but we do think that we can create value from it because we had so much revenue and we have so many customers over the last couple of years. It's not as high margin, but if you get people in there that are willing to work hard and build it, you can really build a nice business. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's synergistic with the fact that we have a lab that can help and support the distribution business to other labs. So, you know, we've got a lot going on. I was just going to say the same thing. You got a lot going on and you're just getting bigger and God forbid that COVID gets worse. That is just going to be a thriving business. And like I said, a botanical product, I think is going to be more appealing than the vaccination that's out there right now. That's a whole market just waiting for you. Those that don't want to be vaccinated, they do want something. They just don't want the vaccination. So I think a botanical product would be right up their alley. I agree with you, but I, I would, I would, go one step further. Most people who are vaccinated right now are lost a lot of immunity. So, right. you know, you've been vaccinated or even if you've been boosted, if it's four to six months out, your immunity is waning and you need something else to continue to support you. And so whether it's kind of an acute, oh, I have, you know, an acute issue or, you know what, I have a, I want to make sure I protect myself over the long term. Let me, let me do something on a daily basis. Or I just got over this and I'm not feeling quite right. Uh, and we're seeing a lot of that with long COVID. I think sure. you do, you know, you do want to support the vaccination if you have it or support the natural immunity that you may have developed with botanical products, because that is going to help you in a variety of ways if you get exposed. Now, did I hear the ratio for Tolavid was one in 25 compared to Tolavir? Uh, the, the ratio of uh, concentration. Solution? Yeah. Uh, no, uh, that's not the way to look at it. Um, the way to look <laughs> okay. at it is the protease inhibition activity. Um, and, and it's a little technical, but basically it's how well does the product bind to the 3CL protease so that the protease cannot do its job anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the way to look at it. And then, um, and, and the lower the number, the tighter the binding. So the, the more difficult it is for the, protease to get away. Let's gotcha. that way. So they call it an IC50. So ivermectin actually has an IC50 as uh, an IC50 of about 50, which is not very good. Not good. Okay. Uh, but, but, but people who say, Hey, I may have had some benefit. They're not crazy. Okay. Now, uh, total of a daily, which is our, uh, you know, lower strength daily version right. is 20. So ivermectin's at 50 total of a daily is at 20. Our total vid is at two, somewhere wow. between two and five. Okay, so a ten to twenty-five times more powerful at doing that job than ivermectin. And then we've got our tolovir, which is below one, is at 0 0.08. So that's Ooh. over fifty times. Okay, and for comparison, um, Paxlovid is at 0 0.006. That's a chemical drug. That's Pfizer's drug. Okay. But the threshold of what you need to have success, you don't need all that from the Pfizer chemical drug. It's not required. You don't need that level of strength. You can overkill. Get it. It, well, I mean, it works. I'm not going to take anything away from them and all the work, work that they've done. But, you know, the biologically speaking, based on what we've seen, you don't need that level. You can get by with, you know, somewhere like south of five. And right. so, okay. and so as we, you know, as we build it out, that's the way to think about the strengths of the products. Gotcha. 
Well, we've covered quite a lot here and you've got a lot going on, a lot of catalysts. Looks like you're going to be making a ton of money as this thing just gets bigger and bigger. Is there anything we did not cover that you would like the viewers or the investors to be aware of? Well, I think, you know, it's important to understand there's a lot going on, um, but the way it came to be is we were, uh, you know, an early stage cancer company that became opportunistic in COVID. And so everything that we're doing in COVID um, is really now on the 3CL side, a separate business that we own 60% of, but is not the main focus of Totos, the company. We're a, a diagnostic testing company. We generate revenue through PCR testing and we're building our revenue base through other tests, eventually launching our own uh, breast cancer test next year, Vedessa, which will significantly drive revenues. And that company, Totos, the parent, wants to be like exact sciences. Okay, that's the company we want to be like. Uh, right. The subsidiary that Totos owns sixty percent of, uh, Three Cell Sciences. That company, you know, that's a lottery ticket, more like a pharma company. Okay, that's the kind of thing where we're generating revenue from Tolavid sales. We expect those sales to continue to ramp substantially right. um, in the months ahead. And then if we get approval for the drug in one or more jurisdictions governments buy in bulk. So it's not a situation where we're going to have to set up a sales team and go and pitch to hospitals and say, oh, please try my drug, look at my data. No, this is a situation where the government buys in bulk. So if the Greek government or some other government wants to buy, you know, whether it's 50,000, 100,000, or a million courses of treatment, that's the, the scale on which they do it. And for Tolovir, as I mentioned, we're in the hospital market. Um, it's important to note that we believe, and so far our, our early data shows, we are better than remdesivir. Remdesivir is priced at over $3,000 per course of treatment. So if you do some math, 10,000 bottles or 100,000 bottles, uh, courses of treatment of Tolovir times pricing similar to remdesivir, because the value is there, all of a sudden you can start to see, you know, that's a lottery ticket and could be big numbers. Yes. Yes. Very big. Very big. All right. I am impressed. I am glad we had this conversation. I think our viewers are going to be impressed too. I see a lot going on with your company that is potentially just going to get bigger. I am really excited about T-Cell Protect over there. Are you going to be able to keep up with the demand if it really blows up over there? Oh yeah, we've been we've been oh, putting yeah. the pieces in, we've Good been putting answer. the pieces in place to make sure we can keep up with the demand. Um, obviously, you know, if you look at where the products are, our highest margin is Tolavir. So if we did ever have a shortage, you know, it would go towards Tolavir. But right now, we we don't see any problem in supplying tens of millions of courses of treatment or tens of millions of bottles of Tolavir. We think we can get that done. Okay. Well, folks, that is a lot of information for you to digest. I want you to take a look at this company because this company is on the forefront of battling COVID, which we're not done with. And there's not a lot of other answers out there, especially botanical answers. Uh, what is the uh, site name where we can get some more information from you? Uh, you can get information on Todos Medical at www.todosmedical.com, T O D O S medical.com and you can visit us uh our tolovid product at my tolovid m-o-m-y-t-o-l-l-o-v-i-d.com fantastic thank you so much for being with us today gerald i hope you'll come back when you have some more news some more catalysts when things kick off and get even bigger we love to keep up with this absolutely thank you so much for having me oh thank you for being here it's been our pleasure thanks. see you thanks